Galapagos in Spanish means tortoise. Fourteen species of large land tortoise inhabit these islands. It is believed that they drifted here over the eons from the coast of South America. The pioneer species adapted to the habitat of each island. Hunting of the tortoise by sailors and whalers almost drove the populations to extinction. A male returned to the islands from the San Diego Zoo is doing his part in the Darwin Research Center captive breeding program. <music> Reptiles are the dominant fauna of the islands. A large population of tea-going iguanas live here. <music> Lizards account for another large portion of the native fauna. This is the first time across the river. Absolutely. The archipelago formed when Mandel thinned because of the interaction of three of the world's tectonic plates. This created a hot spot producing a vast smooth flow. Each major island is formed by a shield volcano with the exception of Island Isabella, which is made up of six shield volcanoes. Throughout the islands, ropey or Pahoehoe lava beds exist, with sections of clinker or ah uh -uh lava also being numerous. Faulting occurs in the archipelago, resulting in the seafloor uplifting, such as island Roca Ridondo. Most avian visitors to the Galapagos are seabirds. The land birds seen in the islands are mostly endemic, having strayed onto the archipelago and then evolving into new species. Darwin used two classic natural selection brood groups to prove his theory. They were the Darwin finches and the Galapagos Island mockingbirds. The Darwin finches evolved into 13 species from the blue-black grass quick which came from South American continent. Recent studies indicate that a hundred thousand years of selection has contributed to the creation of these new species. The birds in the video, the Galapagos pintail, yellow wren, Galapagos dove, four different mockingbirds, and the Galapagos hawk are all endemic to the islands. These islands are controlled by sun, salt, wind, and ocean currents. The climate and ecozones are determined by each island's placement in the seven currents which interact with the archipelago. The seven habitat zones are influenced by altitude, prevailing winds, volcanism, and hydrology. On the coast in the Pahoehoe and Aa Lava, tough cactus hold their own in a hot, arid landscape. On the water's edge, white and black mangrove seeds find space to settle and germinate. These saltwater shrubs are land builders, breaking down rock through root and chemical action.
Malaysia tree, which is endemic to the islands. These trees are located higher up on the mountains, receiving a lot of water from the eternal drizzle called garua. On their trunks are many epiphytes, mushrooms, and ferns. A treat is seeing the dramatic Vermilion flycatcher, which has a range from Utah to South America. With thousands of miles of shoreline, the contact habitats abound with flora and fauna. California sea lions and fur seals breed and rear their pups here. Crustaceans are a large and tasty group which fill the mid-range niche in the food chain. Hermit, Sally Lightfoot and Sand Devil crabs plus longostinos and lobsters provide tasty munchies for man and beast alike. One of those who dine on crab is the endemic lava heron. This dusky member of the family Ardeidae is well adapted to the mangroves and to the lava shoreline. Another member of the Ardeidae family is the yellow crown night heron, which stalks the shores of the island. The brown pelican is very much at home in the Galapagos and is a common sight. There is an endemic variety of the bird which is smaller and darker, emerging in this evolutionary laboratory. The islands are in the range of the colorful American oyster catcher. This bird uses its chisel-shaped bill to dislodge mussels and other bivalves from their attachments to rocks. The Galapagos penguin is the most northerly species of that family. It is closely related to the Peruvian penguin whose range includes the south coast of Ecuador. Because of the cold waters of the Humboldt current, these entertaining birds occupy two of the islands which are in the main flow of that current. Control of rats on their island is one of the top priority projects for the Darwin Center to protect them from predation. Endemic wingless Galapagos cormorant has found that fishing along the shores is so successful that they have lost their ability to fly. Through selection, this species is moving its muscle power from flight to diving and swimming. Three species of boobies, the Sulidae family, use most of the archipelago as a rookery. Most popular is the blue-footed booby. They have an elaborate mating dance with mutual foot lifting, sky pointing, and other entertaining stances. They are good parents and have one egg per clutch. The nest of the blue-footed is not an elaborate architectural edifice. It usually consists of just a ring of guano. Their streamlined body, large webbed feet, sharp pointed bills, and short triangular wings make them a spectacular sight when they fish. They often dive from great height, then chase their prey underwater. The 
grass booby is not any more interested in building a nest than is the blue-footed booby. This species usually lays a clutch of two eggs. The first to hatch is the strongest, getting a head start. The stronger chick pushes out the weaker who dies of starvation or becomes food for a predator. Seblicide is the name for this method of population control. The parent birds seem quite unconcerned. The red-footed booby is the master architect of the Sulidade family on the islands. The male courts by bringing twigs to his prospective mate. The two then fashion a functional but not necessarily elaborate nest for their usual clutch of one egg. The chicks shortly after hatching are fairly independent, and it is surprising that they are not preyed upon by their neighbors, frigate birds, from their next door rookery. Even ocean-going gulls have two species which have developed into separate species in the Galapagos. The swallow-tailed and lava gull are endemic to the islands. The beautiful swallow-tail is the only gull which mates for life. It also fishes at night. This pair, which is preening, may have been together for as much as 40 years. Our goodbye bird on this tape is the frigate bird which inhabits all the western tropic oceans. It is the pirate of the sea. This bird steals its food from other species by intimidating them with its phenomenal flying. This bird in my opinion represents the attitude of many members of the human race towards the rest of the flora and fauna of the world. The establishment of these islands as a United Nations habitat reserve with the cooperation of the Ecuadorian government is the first step in our becoming custodians of our world rather than piratical predators on top of a food chain.